What's up, Unlock Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know the secret and effective, very powerful goal-setting method that I use that you can use week by week to move yourself down the field of success? Well, I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. Normally, it's $45, but since you're a loyal listener to the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. You're listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you want to step into your greatness, you've come to the right place. Here is your host, the human strength expert, Kyle Newell. Hey everybody, it's Kyle once again with another episode of Unlocking Your Inner Strength, the Unlocking Your Inner Strength Show. This is actually episode number 100 which is pretty cool, coming up on two years straight without missing an episode. And with that in mind, I wanted to go over some life principles today, some mind map stuff, and just things that I think have helped me in my life that might help you in your life. So how do you get to 100 episodes in a row? It's consistency. It's following a schedule. I didn't set out and say, oh, I need to get 100 episodes. Let me do an episode a week. In life, You have two types of people. You have the people that will commit to something and be consistent. And then you have those types of people that just do things when they're convenient, when they feel like doing it. Think about how many diets are followed only when the circumstance is right. When you're at home and you have your Tupperware and blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know, so-and-so came in to visit me, so I had to go off my diet. Think of all these different things. That's convenient. Now, the people that only act upon convenience or only do things when they are convenient get convenient results, meaning lackluster. To get results in everything, you got to keep stacking successes on top of successes, one after the other, after the other, and keep stacking them. With the stacks, that brings me into the next point. You have, and this is something I've talked about before, a unique set of skills, Nobody else in the world has your stack. Now, what that means is if I use myself as an example, started out with strength and conditioning, Rutgers football, and then bodybuilding. So that's the base of my stack. Then that kind of led me to nutrition because I had to learn about nutrition to work with athletes and to compete in bodybuilding. So I have those two things. And then I got into writing, really just to promote the business. But then I fell in love with writing. I've taken writing courses. I've really tried to hone that craft. And that's one of my unique abilities, which I'll talk about in a second. Then I got into mindset and mind mapping. So you see how the stack keeps going up and nobody else has the same stack that I do or the same strengths in every area and and vice versa. This is your unique thumbprint or fingerprint. The key is to keep working on your craft until you're very proficient at certain things and and that stack together can be unstoppable. You don't have to be the best at any one thing. Just be very proficient. Make sure your stack is you, it's unique, and you go from there. So what is the unique ability? The unique ability comes from something called strategic coach, which I have not been in that program yet, but I follow a lot of their stuff. And uh, Vince, who coaches me, has been a strategic coach for a while, as well as Paul Mort. But your unique ability is what What do you do uniquely and that fulfills you and carries out your message? And for me, I know that's writing, writing and teaching. So those are my vehicles. And a lot of times I teach through my writing. You need to know what your unique ability is if you're going to build a life of fulfillment when it comes to your career. Now, another thing, too many people that are driven try to claim that their work is their fun. It's not. I love what I do for my career, but work is work. Work might provide you fulfillment, but fun is a separate category. Go back to the six slices of the fitness pizza pie that we've been working on. You have exercise, nutrition, learning, sleep, fun slash play, and relaxation. So you have to make sure you're hitting all these points. Fitness is the ability to show up and participate in life without fatigue. If you fatigue at whatever activity is you want to do, your fitness level is low. If mine was to write 5,000 words a day, I need to build up my fitness to be able to do that. So fitness is not just exercise. And a lot of people make that mistake. There's more to life 
than simply increasing the speed of it. That's a Gandhi quote. It's one of my favorite quotes. If you look at any religion, the purpose behind them, through all the stories they tell, is to help you become present in the moment. If you're not present in the moment, you cannot affect the people that are immediately in your presence or the world. You can't let your love come forth. You can't let your your unique ability come forth if you're always thinking out into the future or holding on to pains from the past. With forgiveness, you have to remember that it should be reframed as thank you for giving me this opportunity to grow. Forgive. Forward giving. It's forward giving in your life and it's freeing you from the past. Very important stuff. What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know the secret and effective, very powerful goal-setting method that I use that you can use week by week to move yourself down the field of success? Well, I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. Normally, it's $45, but since you're a loyal listener to the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. The highest form of learning is unlearning. So I believe in life that we should continually empty our cup. If your cup is always full, first of all, you can't let other things in. Most people go through life and they get so dogmatic and uh, religious about things like training and eating and political beliefs that they, they never expose themselves to say, hey, maybe there's something else. Maybe there's another way. Maybe should, I should at least learn about it. I'm reading a book right now called Proteinaholic. I never would have read this book a couple years ago because I believe protein was the king macronutrient and that protein was everything. Protein means of first importance, yada, yada, yada. But what if it's not correct? What if there's a better way to eat? And I don't know, but I'm going to look into it and I'm going to experiment with my body with it. You have to empty your cup, but the highest form of learning is unlearning. When you know something and you grasp it and then you can let it go because your perspective has changed over time through your experiences, so that's wisdom, that's higher level thinking. That's where true learning takes place. There's different levels of learning. When I first learned how to goblet squat, probably 10 years ago or whatever it was, when I was first exposed to Dan John, I could look at it the same movement, and it's completely different to me now. I know different nuances. I've had to relearn it. I've had to relearn how to body, how different people move. So there's all these, these things. The more uncertainty that you can deal with in life, the more success you're going to have. Certainty is one of the six basic human needs. You can look up the other ones. Most people will never sniff their full potential because they can't deal with uncertainty. And with uncertainty comes fear. And fear is usually based in judgment. Your brain perceives everything as if your very survival is on the line. A fear of judgment is very threatening to the brain because if you go back to how the brain evolved, if you judge me and you kick me out of your tribe, then all of a sudden my chance for survival goes down. Most people cannot deal with hitting send. What I mean by that or publish is they might want to write a blog post or they'll talk about it forever, yet they never publish it because it's never quite right. They got to keep rereading it and they got to make sure there's no grammatical errors and they have to make sure that it sounds just right. Meanwhile, they never do anything and they don't realize that it's more for them than anybody else. Most people aren't going to read something the first time you write. And if they're nitpicking about grammar and things along those lines, that's fine. Maybe that's not your audience. But I believe we should keep building up our fitness to deal with uncertainty, which means you got to put yourself in situations where mental toughness is grown and where things might be uncertain. And you keep building up your tolerance for that. Good is good enough. That goes along with that. The uncertainty factor. I always live by that. I learned that from Dan Kennedy years ago. Good is good enough. Doesn't need to be perfect. Let's launch it and see what happens. And then we course correct as we go. There's something in your brain known as the reticular activating system, and it it, it notices certain things when when you say the color red. Now you're going to start noticing everything that's red, right? If you see, if you get a new car, you're going to start noticing all these other cars that are the same as yours out on the road. It's a course corrector, though. 
If you look at how a plane flies, it's off course 95% of the time, but yet it keeps correcting, keeps getting feedback from GPS to pilot corrects, and it always, not always, but 99.9% of the time ends up where it's supposed to be. Course correction. Know that your brain is the most powerful weapon you have, and you actually access your spirit through your brain as well. If fitness and physical fitness is important to you, you have to take your mental and spiritual fitness important as, you know, make it important as well. To me, out of the F5, so you have fun, fitness, family, finance, and focus, focus is the bedrock. Focus is everything. Our energy and our confidence are our two greatest assets. Do everything you can to hone those and improve those. I know that was kind of stream of consciousness. One thing led to the other. That's all I got for this episode, though. Hopefully that gave you a little boost and you picked something up on it. Please share it with somebody if if, it in, if this show has been impacting you. And please leave a review on iTunes if you haven't already done so. And within the next couple of weeks, I'll have a couple of cool things to announce to you. So stay tuned. We'll be back next week with episode 101. Peace. You've been listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you enjoyed the show, remember to subscribe, rate, and review us in iTunes.